Oh, it doesn't kill you? <laughs> Pace yourself, Arthur. Jesus, they got five pounds lighter. Well, <clears throat> back to it. <coughs> Please don't struggle. Take all this with you.
Don't keep doing this. I wish I died in the bombings. Where are the Americans? Where are the Americans? I used to get food from across the bridge. There must be people out there. for the next minute. about this later.
lovely day for it. Unfortunately, the bridge is not open at this time. It was working just a minute ago, but the door is broken again. You'll have to wait until it's up again. Do you ever let anybody in? Oh, yes. There's someone in there now. And in the past month? Well, in the past month. Ah! Oh, there's a chap in there right now. You don't really want anyone back from the Garden District, do you? Bell, my wastrel friend. No one goes off there, Joy, can actually take Joy. I mean, would you? Everybody feels better if that door stays broken. You, us, everybody. Well, Constable Wright, I suppose now I can tell Central why the bridge keeps breaking down. Central? Ever seen one of these? Oh, bugger me. Y you're not some sort of undercover bridge inspector. This device detects structural irregularities using shortwave radar. But I don't think it will show me the real problem. Will it, Constable Wright? Look, sir, you can fix that door, but them wastrels still ain't gonna take that joy. It makes them see eyes everywhere. That's not for you to decide, is it? No, sir. The, the, the maintenance hatch is that way, sir. I, I, I'd be grateful if you forgot this conversation ever, ever happened. Maybe I will, maybe I won't. Oh, bugger. If I really was from Central, I'd have the card, wouldn't I? There is another way, though, isn't there? Please take a number and sit down. There's nobody else here. Please take a number and sit down. Number two. Now serving number two. Welcome to the Rehabilitation Centre. Actually, I'm just a sort of undercover bridge inspector from Central. See this device? Uh, it detects structural... It... Then you should have no trouble passing the test, should you? Please head through the door there and begin your rehabilitation. your personal belongings into this box, retaining only your clothes. Please continue to the decontamination room. Please discard your clothes. Don't worry, you will be provided with new, proper clothes after decontamination. I suppose I can't shower with my clothes on. I so hate seeing myself naked, though. Wine, still and wine. Mm -hmm. Going to make the mighty, make the mighty yet. God to make the mighty, make the mighty yet. Congratulations, you have been decontaminated. 
Please proceed to the next room and obtain fresh, new, proper, clean clothes. Oh, I hope she's not watching and judging. You look wonderful. Please proceed to the next room. In case there is any residual odour of the Garden District on you, please enjoy this refreshing scent of country flowers. Is that licorice? Why licorice? Get ready for the most important moment in your rehabilitation. Please take your favourite flavour of joy. Vanilla, chocolate, or strawberry. Oh, I must insist that you not traverse the beams of the joy detector without taking your joy, sir. Oh, damn it! They were serious about taking my joy, weren't they? Should clear up soon, I imagine. Right as rain, right as rain. Bob's your uncle. All right. Couldn't be better, thanks. Right, though. Lovely weather. All right. Lovely day for it. Lovely day for it. Lovely day for it. Lovely day for it.
I could take these all the time and I wouldn't have any worries. Please head into the theatre and take a seat. Excellent. Sit tight and enjoy the show. And now it's time for the Uncle Jack Etiquette Minute. You may be wondering, how can I fit in better in Hamlin Village? Well, it's easy. To get along, go along. If someone tells you it's a lovely day, agree with them. <laughs> because of course, it's always a lovely day in Hamlin Village. So don't be afraid of talking to people first. They'll appreciate it. Now, I'm assuming, of course, that you're decently dressed. Eh? Clothes make the man, eh? Indeed, naked people have almost no influence at all in society. <laughs> And don't dress in rags either, or people might think you're a wastrel. Now, what should you do if people are staring at you? Maybe they're asking you if you remember to take your joy. Who cares? Just pop another and they'll congratulate you and go on about their day. And if things seem to be getting a bit hectic, remember, you can always sit on a bench, relax and open the Hamlin au courant. Take a load off. No one will bother you when you're sitting on a bench. Unless you've made them very angry. Well, <laughs> or, I don't know, watch Jack Worthing on television. I hear he's very good. <laughs> well, I'm afraid we've come to the end of our time. Tune in tomorrow for another Etiquette Minute with Jack Worthing. That's me. Isn't Uncle Jack wonderful? <sighs> now, please proceed to the third floor, where you will be tested on what you've just relearned. Just a friendly reminder. Uncle Jack don't mention it, but a word to the wise. Proper decent people don't like people what is running, jumping, crouching, spying, sneaking, breaking or entering. Such like behaviours is what we associate with downers. Avoid them and we shan't have disagreements. you in the face. B. Run and jump and play myself. C. Oh God, the eyes. Clear one. That's exactly right. If 
you need to get somewhere. Don't lurk about like a rotten downer, or run like you're fleeing the scene, or jump about. No need to be in a hurry in Hamlin Village. Play up to do try to pay attention. We want you to succeed. Mrs. Sackville, your question please. If you want to make friends with me, should you A. Give me flowers, B. Talk about old times, C. Stop staring at me, why is everything staring? Excellent! Yes, do give the ladies a lovely bouquet. They do so love flowers. Oh dear, it looks like the eyes have you both, as they say. How disappointing. Remember, doctors are here to help you. If you've forgotten your joy, doctors will smell it right away. And they'll give you a quick injection to make your day a lovely one. Dr. Byron, what is your question? What happens when you take too much joy? A. You can't find your own house. B. Who cares? C. Please, God, make them stop staring. I'm afraid that was a bit of a trick question. It's true, you can't find your house when you overdose on joy. But we want you to see the broader truth, which is, who cares? Oh, clear two. Today is just not your day, is it? But you can always come back for a seventh try. And that concludes this episode of Oh Behave. I hope you made it to the village. If you didn't, remember, we're always happy to give you another shot if you're willing to behave like a decent citizen. Of course we are. Here in Hamlin Village, we're always happy. Well. That's all right. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's time to play Oh Behave, the game where you show that you're ready to come back to Hamlin Village and behave like a proper, decent citizen. What the hell? I passed the test. Oh, for heaven's sake, I'm not going to do this again. How do I get out of here? Are you ready to behave? Now, our five guest questioners are going to ask you one question each. All you have to do is show us that you understand how to behave yourself in Wellington Wells. Mr. Cashier, what question do you have for our prodigal son or daughter? If you want to fit in, you should A. Say hello to everyone you meet, like what you do. B. Visit people's houses, whether they're there or not. C. The eyes, the eyes! Yes, that's right. It never hurts to say hello to people. Player two, I'm afraid the eyes, the eyes, was not the right answer. Mrs. Browning, what would you like to know? If you realise you're wearing rags, should you A. Pop a joy. B. Put on proper clothes for God's sake. And why not pop a joy? C. Why does everything have eyes? That's right, player one. Just popping a joy is not always enough. We do have standards, you know. Player two, I'm afraid everything does not actually have eyes. Jack Constable. Constable, Constable, your question. Right, well, here's my interrogative. If I see you running, jumping about or crouching in the shadows, what will I likely do? A. Tell you to stop your rotten shenanigans before I smash you in the face. B. Run and jump and play myself. C. Oh God, the eyes. Or run like you're fleeing the scene. Or jump about. 
No need to be in a hurry in Hamlin Village. Fail two. Do try to pay attention. We want you to succeed. Mrs. Sackville, your question, please. If you want to make friends with me, should you A. Give me flowers. B. Talk about old times. C. Stop staring at me. Why is everything staring? Excellent! Yes! Do give the ladies a lovely bouquet. They do so love flowers. Oh dear, it looks like I have you both, as they say. How disappointing. Remember, doctors are here to help you. If you've forgotten your joy, doctors will smell it right away. And they'll give you a quick injection to make your day a lovely one. Dr. Byron, what is your question? What happens when you take too much joy? A. You can't find your own house. B. Who cares? C. Please, God, make them stop staring. That's right. Player one. It hardly matters. You might lose a few hours, but sooner or later, you'll find yourself on a bench. No worse for the wear. Oh, player two. Today is just not your day, is it? But you can always come back for a seventh try. And that concludes this episode of Oh Behave. I hope you made it to the village. If you didn't, remember, we're always happy to give you another shot if you're willing to behave like a decent citizen. Of course we are. Here in Hamlin Village, we're always happy. Just uh, watching the day go by. You're not a bloody mule. Pick what you can carry easily.
May I express my delight that you passed the examination, sir? We've not had as many as we'd hoped, sir. Not as many at all. And yet, they say the unexamined life is not worth living. Well, sir, welcome back. Oh, and in case your rustication has been of long duration, please bear in mind there is now a nocturnal curfew. Best be indoors after nightfall, sir. If I want him to bugger off, I bet a nice bottle of scotch would help. So from here, I've got to get to St. George's home and then into the parade. Except that I need a letter of transit to get into the parade. Like the one I left on my desk in the parade. How do I... Get a new one. Wait. The old government printing office was on Maiden Hall. Maybe I can break in and steal some blanks. Where are you going in such a hurry? Where did you go? Fine. Please, don't put me through that again. Looks like the old printing office is pretty well buttoned up. I wonder if there's a way in the back. Done. Nothing to see here. The past is history. Now, now, mind your own business. Yesterday is no place to live. What happened to him? Oh, I'm not quite sure. He's been a solid citizen long as I've been on this beat. Then today he's gone on about leaving Amlin, waving around a suitcase like a rotten downer. Well, we can't have that. Don't know where he thought he was going. Nobody goes to the Garden District, don't have to. Maybe he had relatives across the bridge. <laughs> That's right. There's been an outbreak of relatives across the bridge. Has there been an outbreak of downers? Um, no. Of course not. There's nothing to worry about. Well, that's a relief. I'm sure the joy is just as good as it's ever been. Each batch just gets better and better. <laughs> you keep taking it. It will take care of you. Lovely day for it. Right as rain, right as rain. Here, I want you to have this. I just want you to know that I appreciate what you do. I'm 
touched. Truly. This is for you. Well, well, well. That's right kind of you. Odd. Why are there peepers patrolling the park? I should snoop around a bit. to run the hundred bases. All right. Lovely day for it.
You don't belong there. That's the one more done it. Daniel! He did it! I know he did. <sighs> Maybe I should sit down for a bit. There you are. What? Lovely weather. Right out. All right. Lovely day for it. Lovely day for it. Right as rain, right as rain. All that. Thank you so far, sir. Shit. <gasps> On myself.
we have ways of making you talk. I love it. Very good indeed. Well, I don't think we're going to be able to top that one. If you do hear a good joke, don't hesitate to drop us a note marked Humor Hour. lingering ways to go. Sloshy. Good place for giant octopi. Find the switch again. I'm in business. Good. I can come back here with the minimum of fuss. Hard day's night, that was. Our world has gone mad. We're all in the same let's pretend game. We call a rat a cat. And we pretend our shopkeepers are coming back from holiday. 
and we don't talk about the most important event in our lives, and that is the gates on the bridges. Do you remember when they went back up? I don't. None of us do. But there haven't always been gates, have there? We took down the German gates at the victory. I know, because I walked from Eel Pie to Apple Home then. And weren't my feet sore, eh? Get out of our park! This is no place for free speech! When did we put them back up? I can't remember, but I'll tell you why we did. It's because the rich are robbing us. That's right! We're thin, because the parade is fat. Shut up, you sick down a bastard! Black dog, wet blanket! They're eating our bread! They're eating our butter! And they've locked us out so we won't see! That's why you need a letter of transit! You're trying to bring us down, you rotten downer! Wet blanket! Well, it's time to tear down those gates! Tear down these fences! We'll have none of that anarcho-syndicalist trash, thank you! He's no actually need to get excited my telling the truth. <laughs> well, part of it. That's what I'm doing. I don't see what's all the fun. That's what you get for telling the truth around here, poor sod. I think the fog has actually gotten worse. Oh, hello, love. Come stomp in the puddle with me. <laughs> it's ever so much fun. Good Lord, that's Motterling. One spark and she's going to incinerate herself. I've got to get her attention somehow. Maybe a lot of pretty flowers would do it. Whee! Oh, aren't you a dear? You sure you want to be stomping around in Motoline? It's quite dangerous. Oh my goodness! This is Motoline. What am I thinking? I'd better get out of this puddle, hadn't I? The fumes must have gone to my head. It's just that I miss stomping around in the rain, you see? I don't have a raincoat. I used to have one. Do you know what happened to it? Neither do I, love. Neither do I. I could make one, you know. I know the secret. To sewing through rubber, you have to know the trick. I know. You bring me an old raincoat, I'll make myself a new raincoat. And I'll teach you the secret of sewing through rubber. Hello, love. Did you bring me a raincoat? Oh, lovely! I can make something out of this. You are a dear. Oh, wait. I also need a sewing kit. Have you got one? Hello, love. Hello, love. Did you bring me a sewing kit? Oh, that's exactly what I needed. I promised to teach you the secret, didn't I? Well, listen to this. You make the hole first, then you put the needle through. You got that, dearie? Gloves, boots, another raincoat. You can make anything rubbery that way. Bloody hell. Oh, you can smell the fog from here.
You? You listened? You, you're obviously a man of great wisdom and, and perspicacity. They never listen, you know. If they'd just listen, I know they'd come around. Would you mind terribly posting a few of these? I'm sort of a bit soggy at the moment. Yeah, we shouldn't be seen together. Come back this evening. I'll give my speech. You make them stay and listen. Together, we can change the world. Part of it anyway. Terribly popular. I'm getting discreet about posting this. Right! You did it! Don't pull it around! There they are! I don't Stop see them. what's all the fun was about! The killer's right there! What was Get that? Him. Now it's time, now it's time for I Hear You, the show where Jack Worthy, that's me, answers your letter. Dear Uncle Jack, is it true there are blind albino bulls? Sweet dreams, Arthur. Hey, Richard. Check the acid. You'll have an annoying, burning sensation that can last for minutes or even days, and, and you won't have caught it from anything fun, will you? No. <laughs> so, the best thing to do is to.
Maggots. They're nutritious and scrumptious. You can take your joy immediately. You're a master, just like him. Is there meat on sale? your joy in me. Getting old. We only want to help you feel better. your joy.
Bloody hell. Oh, bloody hell. I don't care if you're a I should draw a crowd. Hopefully not a violent one. I wonder how I could keep them pacified while he gives his speech. He's gonna get himself hurt.
That's an awful lot of bobbies. I hadn't smoked in high school, I could carry a bit more.
You know what? <laughs> Never mind. Next week? Arthur? Arthur Hastings! Lovely day for it. Don't you lovely day for it, me, you idiot? It's me! Sally! Oh, I knew it was you. I mean, the glasses, the hair, the really adorable jacket. Don't ask me how. You're not that awkward little boy anymore, are you? But the way you walk, it's, it's like the mask isn't even there. I just, I just knew. There's Arthur. Sally? You look fantastic. This ancient thing? I've had it two weeks. I'm out of my mind with boredom. Green and white checked. Your dress, the last time I saw you. Running out the door. <laughs> oh, that horrible gingham dress. God, that takes you back. <sighs> You're off your joy. Oh, don't be ridiculous. Oh, you have little fucking faith. I'm not going to turn you in. Whatever possesses you to go off your joy? <sighs> Percy. Oh, God. I saw a picture of him. I promised I'd look after him in Germany. I have to go and find him. How are you going to get out? Do you even have a letter of transit? Absolutely. On my desk, in the city. <sighs> Good Christ. Just tell the policeman that. I'm sure they'll wave you right on through. Yeah, haven't figured that bit out yet. I'm very close with General Bing. Of course you are. <laughs> no. You always did have a knack for making helpful new friends. I mean, I could go see him and ask him to give you a letter of transit. Don't put the General out on my account. I'm sure you've only so many favours you can ask of him. My God. You still hate me, don't you? Yeah, well, I've only been wondering for the past 14 years. We were 16! How could you? Because I liked him. Because he had that adorable beard. I don't know, there isn't a reason for everything. You're the last bloody person who should be off his joy. I can't believe you are. Believe me. Take enough... stuff. Look. Some downer broke into my lab last week, literally tore the bars off the windows, and the ridiculous thing is I forgot to lock the front door. But point is, it's a horrible, terrible world out there. I just don't see you smashing your way into the city without a great deal of help. Oh, no. Not me. I'm living on the King's Road right now. Of course you are. I couldn't exactly have stayed there, could I? Like, nothing happened. Look, I'm sorry. This isn't what I meant to... Maybe we could help each other. Maybe I could come by when I'm feeling... better? Brilliant. You ass. How about going to the King's Road, knocking on her door and apologising grievously? And asking nicely for a letter of transit. She knows General Bing. Damn it, lads! She's Scarper! Oh! But what have we here? A friend of Miss Boyle's, innit? Funny! You don't seem all high and mighty. Perhaps we can express our feelings about Miss Boyle to her friend. Someone there? Why aren't you happy? You need to be happy! No, just rest in the feet. Right, that cuts it. Oi, think you can just buy. 
Look for the cash Looks like the old printing office is pretty well buttoned up. I wonder if there's a way in the back. You know what? <laughs> Never mind. Next week? Arthur? Arthur Hastings! Lovely day for it. Don't you lovely day for it, me, you idiot? It's me! Sally! Oh, I knew it was you. I mean, the glasses, the hair, the really adorable jacket. Don't ask me how. You're not that awkward little boy anymore, are you? But the way you walk, it's, it's like the mask isn't even there. I just, I just knew. There's Arthur. Sally? You look fantastic. This ancient thing? I've had it two weeks. I'm out of a mind with boredom. Green and white checked. Your dress, the last time I saw you. Running out the door. <laughs> oh, that horrible gingham dress. Oh, God, that takes you back. Oh. <sighs> You're off your joy. Oh, don't be ridiculous. Oh, you have little fucking faith. I'm not going to turn you in. Whatever possesses you to go off your joy? <sighs> Percy. Oh, God. I saw a picture of him. I promised I'd look after him in Germany. I have to go and find him. How are you going to get out? Do you even have a letter of transit? Absolutely. On my desk in the city. Oh, good Christ. Just tell the policeman that. I'm sure they'll wave your right on through. Yeah, I haven't figured that bit out yet. I'm very close with General Bing. Of course you are. No. You always did have a knack for making helpful new friends. I mean, I could go see him and ask him to give you a letter of transit. Don't put the general out on my account. I'm sure you've only so many favours you can ask of him. My God. You still hate me, don't you? Yeah, well, I've only been wondering for the past 14 years. We were 16! How could you? Because I liked him. Because he had that adorable beard. I don't know. There isn't a reason for everything. You're the last bloody person who should be off his joy. I can't believe you are. Believe me. Take enough... stuff. Look. Some downer broke into my lab last week. Literally tore the bars off the windows and the ridiculous thing is I forgot to lock the front door. Point is... It's a horrible, terrible world out there. I just don't see you smashing your way into the city without a great deal of help. Oh, no. Not me. I'm living on the King's Road right now. Of course you are. I couldn't exactly have stayed there, could I? Like, nothing happened. <sighs> Look. I'm sorry. This isn't what I meant to... Maybe we could help each other. Maybe I could come by when I'm feeling... better? Brilliant. You ass. How about going to the King's Road, knocking on her door and apologising grievously? And asking nicely for a letter of transit. She knows General Bing. Damn it, lads! She's Scarper! Oh! 
But what have we here? A friend of Miss Boyle's, innit? Funny, you don't seem all high and mighty. Perhaps we can express our feelings about Miss Boyle to her friend. Did you mean... Keep. Uh, you're really bringing me up, you. down. Uh, 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 cheer up. Uh, oh. Get happy. Uh, you won't uh, get away. Can't we work something out? No? Now, nah, now, nah, what's all the scuffle? You've been having an altercation in the alley? Uh, nothing you need to worry about, Constable. I'll, uh, just be on my way. And where is it you're on your way to? Precisely. Just off to see an old friend on St. George. Oh, well, no need to be in such a hurry. The bridge to St. George is, uh, under renovations. Oh. For how long? I hesitate to prognosticate, sir. Dr. Faraday's the only one who knows how to fix the uh, ridiculous contraptions on them bridges. Word has been sent, but we've not had the courtesy of a reply. Why don't you, uh, I don't know, uh, go to Dr. Faraday's house? Because Dr. F has removed to a secret location, the, uh, location which headquarters keeps, uh, uh secret. All right. I'll ask your headquarters then. You some kind of troublemaker. Stay out of city business. I suppose if I want to go and make up with Sally, I need to get Dr. Faraday to come fix his bridge. So I need to visit police headquarters and find out where he's gone. Not risky at all. It's always a little extra complicated with Sally, isn't it?
about this later. Jesus. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> 
That's it. Keep running. I don't have time for this nonsense. Joint detector. Oh, sure, <gasps> Maybe I should sit down for a bit. I wish I kept in shape. Oof. That's the guilty bugger! Right there! Black dog! How do you think I used to run the hundred bases? Salmon. about you already.
Thank you. Thank you. I think they listened. I think they got it. I'm sure they're going to go home and think it over. This is the start of something wonderful. Here. This may come in handy. I don't dare tell people to stop taking their joy. But this will take away the effects of the joy all at once. So you can make them see. Go, go. Spread the word. Make them see. Hello. I'm attempting to locate Dr. Faraday. Uh, can you tell me where I can find him? I'm afraid that information is not for public consumption, sir. I can tell him where to find Bobby Hickenbotham, though. Oh, for heaven's sake. He's not at the reform club again, is he? He was supposed to go to Lud's own. Well, apparently he feels so guilty that Dr. F has been deprived of the liberties, which are the birthright of every English citizen, he's gonna get his arse spanked. Constable Bevan, I'm not the public. I'm from the Department of Archives, Printing and Recycling. We're conducting an investigation into Dr. Faraday's handling of municipal records relating to the maintenance of the interinsular bridges. Two requests have already been sent by Miss Bing to your superior requesting this information. If I have to go back to the parade, Miss Bing's next letter regarding this apparently deliberate festinence will include the name of the last person I talked to. Will that be you, Constable, or the chap who keeps the constabulary's address book? In that case, sir, uh, why don't you take the elevator on up to records? They'll sort you out. Thank you. I shall. What the hell is festinence? They deprived Dr. Faraday of his liberties, but he made all the bridges. Percival Hastings, is it not? N no, it's Arthur. Percival went away. Odd. There are some things you think you'll never forget. But then I suppose you do. I'm Arthur. Arthur Hastings. Memories play tricks on you, do they not? Writers rain, writers rain. Would you like this? Lovely day for it. All right. I am right chuffed to know the constabulary is appreciated. Hello? Constable Bevan said you're the chap who has Dr. Faraday's current address. Uh, that's right. I've got records of everyone's address back there. All alphabetical. I'm quite proud of it. So, where is Dr. Faraday relocated to? Oh, uh, I can't tell you that. You're not a constable. <laughs> I guess it would take two of you to make one constable, if you had platform shoes. <laughs> right. Anyone else you'd like me to not tell you the address of? You're very helpful. That's what everyone says. You know, I used to patrol the street. It was lovely. Shopkeepers give you sandwiches, ladies flirt, the warm sun on your coat. One misstep, and they put you in the records room. It's hardly fair. He was breathing when I left him. Where do you think you're going then? We're not open to the general public. Bugger off! I said, 
Bugger off! Germans want children. I don't know. Where are they taking them? I don't know. They won't say. When are they coming back? No one knows. They won't say. Why won't they say? Well, just shut it, Percy. Just shut it. Sorry. Till the war's over. I guess. They're losing, I think. But the radio... But, but the radio keeps talking about victories. Yes, but the victories keep getting closer to Berlin. I can't hear you. They keep winning, but they're then going backwards. That doesn't make any sense. It does if they're lying. Oh, people shouldn't lie, it confuses everything. Yes, yes it really does. Alphabetical? Maybe I can find Dr. F's address myself. F for Faraday. Lovely. I'm famous. We can't run with all this stuff. You better throw something away before something starts chasing you. Drop some stuff, Arthur, or it's going to be tediously slow going.
Dr. Faraday's in Lud's home. That's crazy. Why? And how do I get to Lud's home? Aren't they renovating it? What's all that about Bobby Hick and both of them? He's supposed to check up on Dr. Faraday, but he's at the Reform Club instead, getting his ass spanked? Hmm. He must have some sort of ID that lets him cross to Ludd's hut. Oh, maybe I could borrow it. Lovely weather. Right as rain. Right as rain. Should clear up soon, I imagine. We eat anything worth Couldn't be better, thanks. Do you remember when we used to swim in the river? Lovely day for it. No, those are the nuts. There you are. Did you hear? They've caught Foggy Jack. Should clear up soon, I imagine. I'm going to take Van's eye lessons. Excuse me. I've been asked to check up on Dr. Faraday. Where's Bobby Hickenbotham? The executive committee don't let just anyone drop by the lab, you know. Why not? Because they might be friends of Dr. F. You know what Dr. F could do with a bucket of motoline and a handful of mechanical bits? No, I don't either. And that's the point, isn't it? He's, uh, at the Reform Club. Again. What are you implying? Uh, apparently he feels a bit guilty about Dr. F. You don't know about his, uh, Beauchamp? Bobby Hickenbotham is marrying my sister. And I will thank you not to cast any perverted aspersions at his reputation. I have been ordered by the General himself to ask for credentials from the Beautification Committee. Have you got any? Oh, heavens. I must have left them somewhere. I'll be right back. Then on your trolley.
Excuse me. I've been asked to check up on Dr. Faraday. Where's Bobby Hickenbotham? The executive committee don't let just anyone drop by the lab, you know. Excuse me, I've been asked to check up on Dr. F Lovely. Another broken motor link pipe. I hope no one's breathing there.
lovely day for it. Do you remember when we used to swim in the river? Lovely day for it. Bob McCartney preaches such thoughtful sermons. The Reform Club. This is where that chap is supposed to be getting spanked, isn't it? The one with the credentials for crossing the bridge to Lud's Hall. I have the oddest feeling about this place. Like I should come back. Maybe not during the day. For it. You know, I think we wear the same size. Ask your letters and questions about our life in Wellington Wells. And today's first letter is from Rupert Shrivener of 12 Spanker Lane. Come out, come out. Mr. Shrivener asks, Uncle Jack, I want to help you feel better. <laughs> is it possible to take Who too much joy? Well, well Mr. Shrivener, it is possible. But you really have to work. You have to take a great deal of joy before you experience any toxic effects. Joy is quite safe in the got short better term. Things to do. You can take up to 10 pills per day if you're a man of average weight. However, there are side effects, as we all know. Joy not only makes you happy, it suppresses bad old memories. If you take too much, it may temporarily suppress memories that you actually need to get around. Do you have trouble identifying the people in your house? And yes, they seem quite friendly and affectionate. Do you find yourself wondering exactly what your house looks like and to how to get to it from there, wherever you are? And when he woke up, he realised it had all just been a bad dream. Except for the night, we would never know the stars. Lovely day for it. I suppose I should come back entirely covered in rubber. Why don't you go away? Lovely weather. I have a bit of a feeling this venue might not be to your taste. Why don't you go away? I suppose I should come back entirely covered in rubber. Bloody mule, pick what you can carry easily. Oh, I don't like an utter perv in this suit. At least I'll fit in among pervs. On the other hand, it ought to protect me against electricity and lightning and things. The 
from the river. Um, Percy, they said you got a caning at school. Yes. Did it hurt very much? No. Are you sure you're going to be all right? Yes. Do you understand why? Why you... what? Well, why you got the caning. Yes. Did you really kick a rubbish bin in Slathy Crowden's face? No, I didn't! Right. Did you kick a rubbish bin? Yes. Did it then go into Lester Crowden's face? I... I didn't see him. I... I didn't see him. He came around the corner. He came around for... He came around the corner. Oh, that's not at all your fault then. Oh, good. I, are you being sarcastic? Yeah, I was being sarcastic. I hate it when you're sarcastic! I know. All right. Oh, much better. Clothes make the man, don't they? Right. I can take his stuff, and then I can walk across the bridge to Lud's home with his credentials. That's... you? right now. I can't find my magic wand. I mean, I know where it is. It's in the locker, of course. But I can't find my key. And John Cleland and his friends are coming. They do so love my magic wand. Do you think you can help me find my key? I have to tidy, you see. Could you bring it to me here? Don't touch anything. It's got to be just so for my guests. Better, thanks. Lovely day for it. I found your key. Oh, you're a good egg, you are. That's a big relief. Mr. Cleland does so love my magic wand. All right, off with you. Shoo. Do 
Is that her magic wand? I could use that as a sort of unbreakable head knocker. I have a feeling that's not what they use it for, though. All right. We must catch up sometime. Lovely day for it. Don't mind me, just having a bit of a sit down. Where did you go? You won't get away. Very, very bad. I'm guilty. Nice to have a way to take people out of commission without killing them. There you are. Did you hear? Mrs. Sapper found a bomb buried in her garden. Lucky it didn't blow her up. Where did you go? I had that coming. <laughs> 
All right. I forgot to tell you the punchline. Hold on. You're not Harry. <laughs> Oh. I'm guilty. There you go, bye. Oh, 
Smoked in high school, I could carry a bit more. Day for it. Watch out for scurvy. Ah. Uncle Jack says. Having a bit of a sit down. Lovely day for it. They say you see the oddest shadows in the street at night. I never look. Lovely weather. Did you see the pipers match? Smashing. Should clear up soon, I imagine. You know, I think we wear the same Lovely size. Lovely day You're looking nice and trim. There you are. See you at the pub. Lovely weather. I can't wait to see how they fixed up Lud's home. All right. Much better. Clothes make the man, don't they? This is a choice. Do it again, do it again. 
Right, I'm done fooling around. Crafted, I must say. Well, 
Rome, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They probably do do this in Rome, don't they? away before something starts chasing you. You're soaked. I'm fine. You're not. Your lips are blue and you're shivering. Where's your coat? In the closet. Why didn't you put it on? 
I don't know. It's been raining all day. Did he not notice the drops of water falling out of the sky? It what? It it wasn't raining. It was drizzling. Now you're going to get sick, and then I'm going to get sick, and then Dad is going to get sick. I love a game of hide and seek. Oh, hi. Hi.
Excuse me. I've been asked to check up on Dr. Faraday. Where's Bobby Hickenbotham? The executive committee don't let just anyone drop by the lab, you know. Why not? Because they might be friends of Dr. F. You know what Dr. F could do with a bucket of motorline and a handful of mechanical bits? No, I don't either. And that's the point, isn't it? He's, uh, <laughs> at the reform club. Again. What are you implying? Uh, apparently he feels a bit guilty about Dr. F. You don't know about his, uh, Beauchamp? Bobby Hickenbotham is marrying my sister. And I will thank you not to cast any perverted aspersions at his reputation. I have been ordered by the General himself to ask for credentials from the Beautification Committee. Have you got any? There you go. Fine. Watch out for anyone chattering away in something that don't sound like English. They're like mad dogs. And they'll give you plague. And keep your mouth shut about penchants, right? Oh, you better take these, in case you do catch plague over there. Not that I would weep. Right. 